Again, in celebration of our school system, meeting our debt service requirements, paying it off in high school. You would just say that for now. in our recent fundraiser up at Barnsley. We made several thousand dollars for our kids and I am so pleased, but without your support and your help, we could not do what we do. At this time, it's my pleasure to, recommend, uh, to recognize a very honorable student from Adairsville High School, Miss Jordan Rakestraw. Miss Jordan here. Jordan, I have so many good things to say about you, and if you'd come up here and stand by these two fine gentlemen while I uh, tell a little bit about you. Uh, Jordan was chosen to represent our county and compete in the United States Senate Youth Program. She won this honor by beating out two other high schools in our district. Jordan is also her class president, her senior class president. And I understand you've been the class president for four years. Oh my goodness. Not only is she a leader and the class president every year in her high school, she has a 4.0 grade point average. And she takes all the honors, gifted, and AP classes. She's going to pursue uh, pharmacy, I understand, and started as a freshman taking all those science classes. And someone told me that you're going in late to work tonight so you could be here to get this recognition. Isn't this a remarkable young lady? Congratulations. At this time, we want to recognize our Employee of the Month. And our Employee of the Month is sponsored by Hilton Gardens and Inn through the Bartow Education Foundation. At this time, we want to recognize uh, Mr. Bob Farmer. Is Bob here? Well, just come up here and let me talk about you, sir. <laughs> Bob is a, a retainer driver. Now, I asked the superintendent what that was, and uh, I had to go ask Jody. <laughs> that means that you drive for everybody, so he has to be a very flexible person. Let me tell you a little bit about Bob. When he's not substitute driving, he helps load and unload the students. He's always willing to lend a helping hand. He's a Vietnam veteran. So that was, I, I saw you standing back there, I hope. Yes, ma'am. Uh, he reads to all the kindergarten classes on Veterans Day in full uniform. <laughs> he also reads during Christmas as the mystery reader, or it was the night before Christmas, he goes beyond and above himself every day. Bob is very positive, and uh, Mr. Bishop says they just couldn't do without you at Alatoona Elementary. Uh, Jody, where are you? I know you're happy to have him. And Mr. Bishop, where are you? Thank you so much for recommending him, and congratulations. And from Hilton Garden and Ian, you can go spend the night and have dinner for two and just enjoy it. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. I give up. Doc Frazier, who taught everybody in Bartow County. <laughs> Ms. Frazier, we're so thrilled with, with you and all of your service and your continued service for our school system. I don't know how we would do it without you. Uh, you're an icon in the community, and it's been a blessing for me to have worked with you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> much. 
According to the Georgia State Constitution, you people are the servants and trustees of we the people. Give us that respect. I asked you before about the care value, communication, accountability, respect, and ethics. How can you justify that, those letters of care, when you don't even give me a response back correctly and not answering everything? Oh, they'll go away. I'll just tell them it's already been answered. Ask. Answer. We're not going away, ladies and gentlemen, this board. Come January, you might have a change on that board, but on this floor down here, nothing's changed. Taxpayers demand the right, the respect of this board to answer our questions. That's all we're asking. Give us the right. Give us the accountability. Show us the transparency and show the ethics. The newspaper argues this board's quick to call out board members by their names. We're not playing along with the rest of the board. But yet we have a board member that yells out situations in other employees' names, and nothing's done about them. We don't see nothing about them being reprimanded by the board, the newspapers, or anything else. Where is, this? Where is this? Personal genders? Double standards? I ask you, look at your oath of office. The oath you took. You are to represent our students and the taxpayers. You work for us, and we're asking you to do your job properly. We're not asking a whole lot. This is what is expected of it. Read your oath. <clears throat> I doubt we're going to get any more answers out of this, but in researching, pay attention to what's going on in the Cobb County, Clayton County, Middle County. It's got a lot of problems down there. The governor back in September removed the whole Miller County Board of Education. You look at the research and online through the internet, <laughs> newspapers, their problems and complaints are nothing different from this board. But there's one big difference. They got an investigation from SACS. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen this board, we are working. There are many, many residents and we're growing stronger and stronger every day, every week. We will get our investigation. We will get our answers. But if you want to save a lot of time, a lot of lawsuits and everything else, then give us our answers today, now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Dr. Hartman. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, the next person that uh, wants to address the board is Mr. Troy Jordan. Hello. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Hey. Um, I'm here to give a status update on our South Central School Band fundraising for our trip to Carnegie. Um, right now we have 109 students and chaperones going, so um, that's the commitment level so far. Um, we just finished our uh, fruit sale, and the candy sale was such a big success, I think we had a little drop in participation, but that's okay, because they still sold 364 cartons and earned about $3,000 for their student accounts. And we did the belt sale, Ms. Frazier helped us uh, there as well, and, and donated her, her um, uh, Barto Education Foundation money, uh, or her time that we could work to get that money. And um, they earned a couple thousand there too for our student accounts. And that was a small, small group of students, but um, very committed. I mean, to go at 4 30 in the morning to Belk, I wouldn't go to Belk at 4 30 in the afternoon. <laughs> um, but hey, they, they, they're doing what they're supposed to do. The kids are doing great. Um, but they've already made uh, two payments so far. That's almost half of their triple cost. Um, and then recently, we played at Lake Point, the groundbreaking ceremony. I know Dr. Harper was there. Really kind of a cool event. Um, governor was there. I got to shake Bobby Cox's hand. I had to chase him down, but I had to get it. Um, but um, a lot of people came up and raved on the band. Um, some executive from Coke asked me, what high school is this? And I had to correct him and say, I'm, that's middle school, you know, but we play high school music. Um, and as a result of that, uh, we had an anonymous donor who gave us a check today for $10,000. Wow. So, that, mathematically, we, our trip with the reserves of the boosters, um, you know, the, the transportation is taken care of. So, and it's only November. <laughs> so, I'm thrilled. And then now we can concentrate on, uh, we do have a few students that may need some scholarship or sponsorships, and we're working on that. 
Uh, we're teaming up with Lee Daniels Insurance. Um, they approached us actually, and Sean Spratt from Walmart. But I told Sean I've already, you know, exhausted him. <laughs> <laughs> but Lee's uh, uh, hopefully going to get back with us and we're going to work on something for that. And we are, um, another result from the Lake, that, Lake Point thing was that um, uh, Mr. Chris Thomas from the Carlos Alberto Chamber of Commerce asked us to play at the hometown Christmas. So you'll see the South Central Middle School band there around 2 o'clock. So come on by and say hi. And we'll try to raise some more funds, hopefully. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great news. Mr. Jordan, thank you. Dr. Harper. Mr. Chairman and board members, we have Mr. William Eli. Want to address the board? Eli? Sorry. My name is uh, Eli. William Eli. And I'm, uh, I talked with Dr. Nelson about three or four weeks ago about uh, student uniforms. And uh, he seemed to like it. I've liked it. And everything. I've been thinking about it for several years. But before the end of last school year, uh, there was an article in the uh, Athens Clark County Athens Banner uh, about their school, some of their schools over there. They were going to introduce uh, uniforms in the school. So I talked to a lady, uh, Miss Presley, over there, and uh, she said this uniforms are working out good. So the kids love them because they're wearing their colors to school. And it's teaching them to uh, dress a little bit nicer. And it's ending any ridicule. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm dressed better than you and all that. And this is uh, a lot cheaper than buying school clothes. Instead of $150 for a pair of tennis shoes, uh, spend about $40, maybe $50 for uh, some low quarters, you know. And then they have the shirts and everything. I have uh, the paper work I have here it has a link on it that you can go through and check prices. And uh, also, uh, these are companies that will come in, you know. And also, you can uh, you talk to Walmart, uh, Target, Kohl's, and all the other ones. Too expensive, a little bit expensive. And all but they might be able to get the, uh, the pants and the shirts and on that for you, they're cheaper price. But the parents, uh, sometimes the parents say, well, it's going to cost a bunch of money. Well, it's not. It's cheaper than buying school clothes. And uh, they, uh, the kids just, it's new. Nobody likes to have something new. I don't know why. But uh, with this right here and all that, uh, it ought to help. I read in your uh, student handbook and everything, and read some of this and all. This is good. This is real good and all. But uh, I understand too that Cobb County has some of this in place, and surveys that I have seen help students to pay more attention to their studies, their work, and all than it does the it takes the pressure and the strain off of them by having, uh, by everybody looking alike. And uh, it, uh, they like to say, that lady said they, they like it and they're proud of it. And uh, I'm just asking you to consider this, you know, and uh, I have got some things here for you. I couldn't get my printer. My printer's getting old right now. And slow, but I couldn't get one copy of it. And I, I finally got it fixed today, but I didn't have time to make copies. So this is going to go to Dr. Nelson. And then the other stuff here with the link on it, excuse me, with the link on it, will go to each one of it. And uh, all that. So uh, you have that. And uh, like I said, I'm just asking you to consider this. I'm not coming back. <laughs> y'all come on, put the ball in y'all's court. You can either take it and run with it or what you do. But I am, uh, I have one more thing to say. <coughs> about the uniforms. I want to congratulate you on the Old Cast High School for learning center. That's something we've needed for a long, long time. <clears throat> and it should have the uh, dropout thing. You know. And, uh, 
You have two schools, the Cass, I, and Cloverleaf. You know, and uh, Cass, I is being used. Cloverleaf, as far as I know, is not. But all of them have a flat roof. And I've never seen a flat roof that didn't leak. <laughs> and, uh, some of these architects that are so smart and everything, they say, well, we can't buy a trust like that, that big. These steel companies are making trust, you know, and they're pretty strong and everything. And uh, they can be salvaged. I know you're building one school in Emerson, I don't know what else, you know, but where the schools are costing used to be 29 million. Now they're running 35 to 38 million. Oh, we could use a break. No. Uh, but, uh, if you put these uh, gable roofs on them and get the water off of them, then after that you can go inside and, and uh, doctor up the water damage and clean it up. And, right. and uh, it won't, uh, it costs a whole lot less than 35 million. And also, uh, I just want to throw that at you. And also, you can use uh, local labor. And I'll spread the money right here, that's where the uniform is. Get the uniform here. Keeping all the money here. Uh, I'll give you all this. I'm not going to give you yours. I'm going to give you that made up on that one. Copy it. But the link that she put on this blows up a lot. And uh, I came over and brought you Thank something the uh, first part of the year. The, uh, I brought you the copy of the uh, paper or article in the paper. But you were right in the middle of uh, budget, furloughs, and all that. So I didn't expect to hear anything from you. I wanted to hear from you. I appreciate y'all folks listening. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. I'd like say, I'll be here for now. Mr. Chairman. Excuse me. I, not right yet. Excuse me. Thank you. Do you have any other public participation? No, sir, I do not. Superintendent's report. Yes, sir. Let me move into that at this time, uh, Mr. Chairman and board members, and I've got uh, several slides I want to show you and talk about those with you this evening. And uh, with the